In 1984, the Ethiopian famine had resulted in an estimated death toll of a million. The major cause of this famine would be a decade-long drought that the region was going through. Now, the scientists believed that this was either due to overgrazing or poor land management. But no, the major culprit of this famine would be a phenomenon that was already on its way, creating numerous catastrophes. The global dimming. In the 1960s, Jerry Stanhill was in Israel when he was appointed to design an irrigation system that needed the calculation of how much sunlight the country received using light meters. He returned to Israel 20 years later and repeated the experiment to realize the solar energy received by the surface had drastically reduced by 22%, which is when he stumbled upon the global phenomenon, global dimming. In Australia, scientists have recorded the pan evaporation rate, which was the rate at which water evaporates from an open pan exposed to the sky for decades and in the 90s realized that the rate of evaporation was gradually decreasing even though the average heat was increasing due to global warming, creating a very interesting and puzzling paradox. The scientists then realized that the main driving force for the molecules of water to get knocked out was the direct sunlight hitting the surface of the water and not the pre-existing heat or humidity. The main cause of global warming was the pollution in the air caused by the burning of fossil fuels to harness energy in the process creating byproducts like sulfur dioxide, soot, ash and aerosol. These byproducts in the air cause the properties of clouds to change. Clouds are usually formed when water droplets are seeded by airborne particles like pollen. Polluted air results in clouds with larger number of droplets than unpolluted clouds which in turn makes the clouds even more reflective, hence reflecting more of the sun's heat and energy back into space. Global dimming has reversed itself since about 1990 due to a significant increase in the awareness of the effects of global dimming and actions taken to reduce the number of aerosols suspended in the air. The main problem of solving the global dimming situation was that it would result in the world getting considerably hotter, a price to pay for reducing global dimming without tending to its root cause, global warming. While we decrease global dimming, the rate of cooling decreases and the rate of heating increases, bringing about a faster increment in the global warming, which made us realize that global dimming has made us underestimate the power of global warming. Now, the only way to successfully tackle this disastrous climatic paradox would be to deal with the roots of both global dimming causing pollutants as well as the global warming causing greenhouse gases. Together and soon, we must try to amend our actions before it's too late, especially for the sake of our future generations.